What is going on everybody? My name is Banehorse and this week I'm doing a tutorial video on polypainting. I apologize that there's no YouTuber sculpt this week. I was working on one for a while and I really didn't like how it was coming out, so instead I'm going to be showing you all how I finalize the sculptures you see at the end of my videos, since I don't show it in the sped up versions. So welcome to ZBrush! Normally when doing a tutorial, you would start with the interface, and eventually I will do that one day, but for now, I want to show you polypainting. So what is polypainting, you say? Well, it's where you can take a plain Jane model like this one, and add a little bit of life to it, like this. Or in simpler terms, it's texturing a model. So there are a few things to know before you go and start coloring. First, I like to stick my color palette over on the side, so that way I don't have to constantly open the color tab. Next are these three buttons. These buttons are your friends when it comes to poly painting. I go to these first before I start to paint my model. Why is that, you ask? Well, good question. This is because when you have a fresh steaming pile of sculpts ready for some color, it doesn't have a material baked into it. If you want to see if your model has a material baked into it, simply change the material you have. If the material doesn't change on the model, you know it's baked. However, if you click a different material and the model changes material, you know it's not baked in. All you simply do for this is choose your selected material and go over to the color palette. Make sure you have the MRGB channel selected with whatever base color you want. With MRGB selected, this will bake a material as well as a color into your model. This is nice because it's giving the model a clean surface to paint on. Then in the color palette, go and press Fill Object. So that way, if you have another subtool you want with a different material, the subtool you just worked on won't be affected by this new material change. Now, if you want to start actually painting on your model, you must remember to select your RGB channel at the top. With this selected, you can choose a brush and a color and start painting. But be cautious. The brush you selected most likely will have the Z-Add or Z-Sub on. This will affect the model as you paint, because while you're adding color to it, you're also either adding more clay or taking away clay. So if you don't want that, turn it off. Now you can paint to your heart's content. Here are some modifiers to help customize a brush to help you get the effect you may be looking for. Using the focal shift will help you get either a hard edge or feathered edge. This can help when blending colors. Another major tool to use is masking. Simply mask off an area and use it to help you make more precise edges. And finally, you can use alphas to help you paint. These are especially helpful when trying to get a certain textured effect or just placing a logo on the model. I'm just going to place this right here. There are so many different brushes and alphas you can use to mix and match to get different combinations and hopefully allow you to get the result you so desire. So don't be afraid to experiment, and remember the only way you'll get better at something is by doing it over and over again, so get to it. I'm hoping to have my YouTuber sculpt up next week, and if I finish it earlier, I will post it most likely earlier. But that's it for now, remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and remember to keep creating. Goodbye.